Today, I'm going to tell you the story of something that almost happened. Earlier this year, OpenAI announced that they had created a model called GPT-2. This model uses natural language processing, which is a subfield of artificial intelligence, to generate long form, so long articles, based on a single prompt. Now, the fact that they can make an AI that writes isn't what makes this model so interesting. A lot of people have designed AI models that can write. However, it usually sounds a little bit off. We saw this in my Valentine's Day video where I trained an AI bot to recreate Valentine's based on stereotypical Valentine's Day savings. Some of them sounded weird, some of them sounded vaguely homicidal, and all of them sounded like they weren't written by a person. Now keep in mind the model that I made is far below the gold standard of this field, but creating long realistic written pieces that were generated by AI has been a goal that the field hadn't quite reached consistently yet. That is, until GPT-2. I'll include a link to the official announcement from OpenAI in the description, but in short, GPT-2 is a model that can create long written pieces using only a prompt. I'll read some for you. Okay, so the prompt is, in a shocking finding, scientists discovered a herd of unicorns living in a remote, previously unexplored valley in the Andes Mountains. Even more surprising to the researchers was the fact that the unicorns spoke perfect English. And here's the model completion. Keep in mind this took 10 tries to generate, so it's still not perfect, but this is a lot better. The scientists named the population after their distinctive horn, Ovid's unicorn. These four horned, silver white unicorns were previously unknown to science. Now, after two centuries, the mystery of what sparked this odd phenomenon is finally solved. Dr. Jorge Perez, an evolutionary biologist from the University of La Paz, and several companions were exploring the Andes Mountains when they found a small valley with no other animals or humans. Perez noticed that the valley had what appeared to be a natural fountain surrounded by two peaks of rock and silver snow. So it goes way longer than that, but I'll stop there. So this is a pretty powerful model, and OpenAI recognized that. In fact, a large part of their release announcement dives into the implications of models like these. It's even in the title. And the discussion focused on a topic and a type of model that the AI and policy community are currently struggling to deal with. These are dual-use models. Dual-use is exactly what it sounds like. It's an algorithm that can be used for two purposes. In the case of AI, it usually refers to models that can be used for either beneficial or malicious purposes. In this case, GPT-2 can be used to translate between languages, improve transcription services, or become an automated writing assistant. On the other hand, it can be used to generate fake content that people may not be able to distinguish from real content. Because of concerns around malicious use, OpenAI decided not to release the full model, so the model that generated the thing that I just read. Instead, they released a smaller version of the model, as well as a technical paper that explained how they did it. So the reactions to this decision were decidedly mixed. People with strong beliefs regarding open sourcing and sharing of code believed that OpenAI was withholding a valuable discovery from the rest of the AI community. People with concerns over the malicious implications and fake content generation generally agreed with the decision, although they also had thoughts on how it could be better handled in the future. Some people thought that OpenAI was overhyping their model for publicity, and other people didn't think that this strategy of withholding the model is effective given that you've already released a technical paper that explains how to make it. That last theory is going to be the focus of today's video. Earlier this month, an independent developer announced via a Medium post that he had been able to recreate the full GPT-2 model that OpenAI had decided to withhold several months ago. In his post, he announced his plan to release the model at the beginning of July unless convinced otherwise. He also reached out directly to OpenAI with his copy of his model, although OpenAI did not confirm whether his model matched the specs of the model they had been able to generate. So you can read his Medium post in the description, but in short, he believed that releasing his full GPT-2 model would force developers and institutions to create defensive algorithms that could detect this kind of generated fake content. He also believed that releasing GPT-2 would make the public more aware of algorithms like this so that people could be smarter about what they choose to believe and learn how to identify fake content. Finally, he thought that GPT-2 didn't represent a significant step up from current methods of generating fake content via content farms. Similarly to OpenAI's initial announcement, this also drew mixed reactions. Before we get to them though, I want to know what you guys think. Do you think he should release the model or not? 
Let me know what you think and why in the comments. And then I'm going to go through the rationales that people had. And at the end, I'd like you to update your comment with your thoughts after you've heard everyone's arguments. Okay, so the mixed reactions again fell into about three categories. In the first category was people who thought that he should release his model. This was a minority of the responses, and most of them agreed with the points that he laid out in his Medium post. Some of them fell into the category of people who were interested in the open sourcing and sharing of these models, so they were interested in the technical implementation that he came up with. And interestingly, few of them actually argued on the base of the beneficial impacts of releasing a model like this. In the second category were people who thought that he should not release the model. And this was the majority of the people that I saw. Now these people weren't as focused on releasing GPT-2 specifically, but on the precedent that this would set for the release of future dual-use models. The AI community doesn't have established rules or regulations on when or how someone can release potentially malicious models. So if someone were to develop a model that had significant potential for malicious use, they could look to this as an example of why they should release the model. Additionally, they disputed the idea that releasing GPT-2 to the public would increase public literacy around the dangers of fake content generated by AI, citing confirmation bias. And the third category of people were the people who thought that he was lying about it, but that's not an interesting category, so we're not going to talk about it. Okay, so now that you've heard people's thoughts, has your opinion changed? Let me know in the comments. Here's what I think. It probably doesn't surprise you to find out that I was in the category of people who did not think that he should release this model. I'm not overly concerned about the release of GPT-2 specifically, especially since the smaller model that they did release can already create some very convincing content. There's an entire subreddit that's just made up of GPT-2 bots, and it looks like every other subreddit that you could ever happen upon where you're not familiar with the topic. However, I found two main flaws in the developer's argument. First, the idea that releasing a model like this would result in people developing defensive algorithms that could identify AI-generated content just doesn't really have any precedent. In fact, things like deepfakes have been around for a really long time through publicly released algorithms, and we're just now starting to have discussions about creating models that can identify and combat deepfakes. Second, the idea that making the public aware of GPT-2 will increase fake content literacy fails in two ways. One, releasing a model doesn't mean that everyone knows about it. I mean, how many of you knew what GPT-2 was before this video? And two, just because people know about it doesn't mean it changes behavior. We all know that Facebook's done some ridiculously unethical things with our data, but we're all still on Facebook. For now, the argument around releasing GPT-2 will remain theoretical. Several days after posting the original Medium article and after discussions with people from OpenAI as well as some other organizations, the developer in question released a new Medium post explaining his decision not to release the model after all. This change of heart seems to have come from a lot of the things that the people who did not think that he should release the model brought up in public discussions, mainly the precedent that this would set for the release of future models. But the debate over the release of dual-use algorithms is not over and out by a long shot. After all, researchers release dual-use algorithms all the time when they publish research or present a project. And while one algorithm might not have a huge impact, precedent that it sets does. Okay, ending on a dark note. If you enjoyed this video, you can let me know by smashing that like button and subscribing to my channel. You can also support me on Patreon. Thank you so much to all of my current Patreon supporters. Let me know what you thought of this. This was something that I enjoyed watching go down on Twitter, um, and I'm always happy to cover like current events in the AI community if that's something that you think you guys would be interested in. Next week's video is going to be on the YouTube algorithm, so stay tuned for that because that's been a hot topic as of late. And otherwise, you guys can find me on the social medias, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye. In this case, GPT-2 can be... In this case, GPT-2 can be used to... GPT-2, GPT-2, GPT-2...